Good morning, everybody. It's Brian of London, live from my forest in Tel Aviv. And let us begin. So I actually brought a piece of paper with me, see? Because I wanted to read something and uh, I couldn't I couldn't pretend I could commit this to memory and remember it all. So here we go. I'm going to read this statement, which is from the British Board of Deputies of British Jews, concerning Israel's basic law, the national law, the law which I made a video about last week, which basically just says Israel's a Jewish country, this is our flag, this is Hatikva is our anthem, and I guess the most controversial bit, which I will address later, is uh, Israel is the exclusive the, the Jewish people have the exclusive right for self-determination on the land of Israel. So this was the response, the criticism from the umbrella group for all of the Jewish organizations in the UK, or nearly all of them, called the Board of Deputies of British Jews. And they, of course, generally lean left, as Jews are wont to do elsewhere. And so this was the statement from the senior vice president, Sheila Gewo. Grello, Grello, I don't know how to pronounce her name. Uh, this is, I'm going to read it in full and then we'll deconstruct it. Whilst we celebrate Israel's Jewishness, there is concern that some of the measures in this law are regressive steps. Among Israel's great strengths are its democracy and diversity. <coughs> Being Jewish is a wonderful thing, but this should not lead to doing down others. All people should be valued, and Israel's Arab and other minority populations should be a treasured part of society. The lesson of Jewish history is that societies are stronger when minorities are affirmed, and they decay when minorities are degraded. We will be writing to Israel's ambassador to express concern at these measures. Okay, so this is, <laughs> this is the statement from British Jews about a law passed in the Knesset here in Israel. Oh my God. So I'm not gonna go over it in order for a reason. I am gonna tell you the bit that I find most unbelievably offensive in this letter. Because basically I see this letter, this statement as almost a Corbynesque level of calling Israel a Nazi state. And uh, this is the bit, this bit is absolutely astonishing. The lesson of Jewish history is that societies are stronger when minorities are affirmed. Which part of Jewish history are they talking about? Are they talking about the Nazi state? Is that, is that the bit of Jewish history? Jewish history under the Nazis? Is that what they mean? The lesson of Jewish history is that societies are stronger when minorities are affirmed and they decay when minorities are degraded. Are they saying here that the law passed in the Knesset is degrading minorities in a way that has been done to Jews in the past, in the history, in Jewish history? As far as I can tell, that's the implication of that line. That line is, as far as I'm concerned, what the, Labour, the UK Labour Party has just allowed as valid criticism of Israel, um, which is comparing it to a Nazi state. I'm kind of flabbergasted by that. The, the, the necessity to, for them to do that, to make that criticism in a written statement is totally and utterly unbelievable to me. And also for Israelis to come and sit next to me with kids. Anyway, <laughs> there's other problems with this, obviously. Firstly, you know, the way it starts off, whilst we celebrate Israel's Jewishness, what? What kind of language is Jewishness? Anyway, there is a concern that some of the measures in this law are regressive steps. Yeah, if you're progressive, then you think everything is regressive. Among Israel's great strengths are its democracy and diversity. I'm sorry, diversity is not our fucking strength. Now, we have a large Arab Muslim population, but as far as I'm concerned, a lot of the time, like last night, when they sneak into homes of someone here and stab them to death, that is not a strength of our society. A strength of our society is that, thank God, that little murderer was shot dead on the spot, okay? But we're burying a father this morning, okay? That diversity is not our strength. 
That is not a slogan I recognize. It might be one that the Jews in the diaspora like to talk about, but bullshit. Diversity is not our strength. It's a burden we bear. It's a cross we bear. Being Jewish is a wonderful thing, and it should not lead to doing down others. I agree with that. I don't think this new law does down others. All people should be valued, and Israel's Arab and other minority populations should be a treasured part of the society. They are a part of society. They are definitely a part of society. Not much we can do about that. Um, I don't think we're looking to... Uh, I, I think the days of talking about mass transfer is, is probably over, but diversity is not our strength. It's bullshit, as someone is commenting. Thank you. We have Arabs. The law did not change the status of the Arabic language. Uh, it's not going to be removed from road signs following this basic law. The law said nothing about it. And that's, in fact, in the first line of their statement, some of the measures in this law. There are no measures in the law. It's just a statement of freaking facts. Okay. Just to reiterate what I said a little earlier, the bit that really causes the problem is when it says towards the end, the lesson of Jewish history is that societies are stronger when minorities are affirmed. As far as I can tell, the Jewish Board of Deputies is 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 comparing modern Israel and this modern law to a Nazi state. And that is unacceptable. It is the very definition, not that I like the term, of anti-Semitism. I prefer Jew hatred. I can't believe that Jews in the UK who represent the Jews of the UK are coming up with a statement that evokes Jew hatred. In fact, I can believe it because that's why we have the term self-hating Jews. They don't like us being strong here. Now, I'm going to tell you my valid criticism of the basic law and it is this there are probably there are a few groups uh, a few races or I, I don't like the term race but there are through a few eth ethnicities in Israel who are not Jewish but who have a very very strong claim to rights uh, to indigenous rights and on the border with rights of long-standing presence. It's, it's kind of complicated how that works. The first one are the Druze. Now, Druze society and culture, it's not Muslim, it's not Jewish, it's not Christian, it's, it's hard to pin down, but it definitely grew up in a wide area, a wide geography that does include parts of what are Israel today, especially up in the Golan Heights. The Druze have become very, very, uh, integrated members of Israeli society but not assimilated they do not act like Jews they aren't Jews but they are integrated they serve in the armed forces they're fantastic members of, uh, of, of Israeli society if anybody has a cause to be somewhat put out of joint by some of the language in the statement it would be the Jews of Israel definitely um, the second group are Aramaic Christians now these are Christians who trace their lineage back before the Islamic invasions. They're, 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 they're remnants of Christians who resisted dimitude or, or just resisted the Arab conquest. So if they choose their language to be Aramaic, that is an indication that they didn't want to become Arabs and fall under the dimitudinal protection of the Islamic conquerors. And then you've got some other groups like the Samaritans who live on Har Bracha above Nablus Shem. Uh, that's another complex e ethnicity. It's kind of closer to Judaism. It's not really fully Jewish as we would recognize it. But again, these are very, very, very small parts of our population. And the only reason they exist in any safety is because we established the Jewish state here to look after them. They, they, they would not exist under any Arab or Muslim state. They would be wiped out the way that the Yazidis uh, and the Kurds have suffered under Islamic rule. So they owe their safety and their existence to the protection of Jews and the Jewish state. That's why the drafting of the basic law, I would have done it in more la in language that evoked indigenous status and spoke of indigenous rights and rights of long-standing presence. The, the, the Arab, the Muslim Arabs and the so-called Palestinians of today, they, they are neither They've neither been here for very long. They don't have uh, a culture that grew up here, so they don't have anything indigenous to the land. Um, they have only 
in some cases rights of long-standing presence, but when you dig a little deeper into their family history, there's very little of that. So there is valid ways to criticise the nation law. I still wouldn't criticise it. I think what they've passed is absolutely fine. It can be amended. The language, I think, could be changed to be more focusing on the indigeneity of Judaism. That would be the point I would push, because that's what I've been talking about for a long time. But the British Board of Deputies knows none of that. It thinks in, it does not think in those terms and it doesn't understand those terms. And that's why the statement they released is, as far as I'm concerned, according to the International Holocaust Remembrance Society or whatever it is, definition of anti-Semitism, the British Board of Deputies of Jewish Jew Jews is making a comparison of Israel to the Nazis. And that is absolutely flipping disgusting. I'm Brian of London. I'm here in my beautiful forest in the middle of Tel Aviv, uh, Berry Sheep Forest, in case you're looking for it on the maps. There's a little cafe here next to the river. I come here most Fridays. Uh, it is rakingly hot. I, I'm told it's really hot back in England too, but uh, at least when I'm done with this walk, I'll get off into the air conditioning. And um, it's good to talk. Share this. I shall put it up on YouTube later. And um, it's with some sadness because you know, this is the morning after yet another break in, terrorist stabbing um, in a community south of Jerusalem. Uh, just too sad for words. Um, but we're still here and they're not going to stab us out of our home. Just ain't going to happen.